So all these other terms you can ignore because the leading term is the highest power. In this case, it's x to the squared, x to the 2. So just ignore that other stuff and now find the highest power here. Again, the coefficients aren't going to play a major role at this point because I see that the top is growing like x cubed, the bottom is growing like x squared, and if I sort of pretend to cancel, I would see an x on the top and nothing on the bottom. I'd see a 1 on the bottom. So this basically tells me that the top is the one that's dominating. Right? If you cancel, you would see x over, I'm sorry, you would see x over 1. Right? So you'd see 5x over minus 2. And what's the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x divided by negative 2? Well, the answer is you're going to get something that's undefined. You're going to get something that's undefined. In fact, this is equal to negative infinity because that negative sign is there. And so there's no horizontal asymptote. Since the limit doesn't exist, there is no asymptote. This thing is just shooting down to infinity, shooting down to infinity. How do I get that negative sign, by the way? Well, I see this is negative. 5 over negative 2 is negative. And so after I cancel away, I'm basically looking at exactly that. And you can see there's a negative sign there. So as I put in bigger and bigger numbers, this gets bigger and bigger but with a negative sign in front of it. Okay, so if we get infinity or negative infinity, there's no horizontal asymptote. If we actually get a number, there is a horizontal asymptote. How do we do this in practice? What you do is you look for the highest term here, highest term there, and then see what happens after you cancel. Let's do a few more examples to really illustrate what's going on. So let's find the asymptotes, the horizontal asymptotes, for the following. x squared plus x minus 6 all divided by 3x squared minus 9. To find the horizontal asymptote, I want to let the x's go off to the horizon, so I'll take the limit as x goes off to infinity. What do I do to do that? I look for the highest leading term here and the highest leading term here and throw everything else away. The highest term here is x squared. Highest term here is this x squared. So I drop everything else away. You see that? And then what do I notice? I notice I can cancel that x squared with that x squared. When I do that, I'm left with just a 1 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. What's the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 third? Well, there are no x's there. So that's just a number, 1 third. So what's the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 third? It's 1 third. It doesn't know. It doesn't care about x. It's just the number 1 third. If you say, what's 1 third doing as x goes to infinity? It's the same thing as what 1 third is doing if x goes to the store or x goes to a movie. It doesn't care what x is doing. This is the number 1 third. So when the highest powers are the same, then we look at the leading coefficients, and that gives me the limit. And so therefore, since that limit exists, there is a horizontal asymptote. There's a horizontal asymptote at y equals a third. Let's try another one. Let's find the horizontal asymptotes for 3x plus 1 over 2x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 7. Well, what I do is to find the horizontal asymptote, I want to take the limit as x goes off to infinity and look for the leading term on the top and bottom. The leading term here, I don't look at the coefficients. Those don't determine the leading term. It's the powers. So here, it's the x to the fourth. Here, it's just the x. So I'm looking at this. And now you can see that I could cancel an x away with the x to the fourth, which would leave me with 3 over 2x cubed. 3 over 2x cubed, what happens as x goes off to infinity of 3 over 2x cubed? Well, the bottom is getting larger and larger and larger and larger but the top is staying at 3. So if I have 3 on the top and this really, really big thing on the bottom, the whole thing is tumbling down to 0. So this limit exists, equals 0, and so there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Let's try just two more. The limit as x approaches infinity of 97x minus 3x squared plus 4 all divided by 1,000 plus 20,000 square root of x. Look at that complicated thing. What do you do? You don't panic. You find the leading term in the numerator and the denominator. Notice, by the way, the leading term doesn't, isn't determined by the coefficient, just determined by the highest power. 
So in this case, it's not in the front one, even though usually you think it's in the front one. It's here. It's minus 3x squared is the leading term on top. That dominates. That really shows how the top is growing. You can ignore everything else. It's growing much slower than this. What about in the bottom? Well, the bottom, the leading term is this. This is just a constant, but this has x's in it. So in fact, what I'm looking at now is that quantity right there. And now, who wins the fight? Well, remember that the square root of x is actually x to the 1 half power. So here I have an x squared. Here I have an x to the 1 half. I can cancel this with the top, and it leaves me with x to the 1 and a half power. So I actually now have x to the 1 and a half power on top, and I've just got this constant 20,000 on the bottom. What happens as x gets really, really large? The top dominates. The bottom is fixed. This goes off to infinity. And so I think you're seeing the pattern. It actually goes to minus infinity because of the negative sign. So I think you're seeing the pattern. If, in fact, the highest power on the top is greater than the highest power on the bottom, then the limit doesn't exist, and there's no horizontal asymptote. If the power on the bottom is greater than the power on the top, the limit does exist and will always equal 0. And if the highest term on the top is the same as the highest term on the bottom, then the limit is just the coefficient of the top term divided by the coefficient of the bottom term. So let me do one last of those examples for you. 6x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 1 divided by 5x to the fourth minus 16. Let's find the horizontal asymptotes there. So what do I do? I take the limit as x goes off to infinity of this quantity. And so what is that limit? Well, I find the highest power here, which is this term right here, the x, this is 6 times x to the fourth. The highest power down here, which is this. I see those powers are equal, so you can see me canceling them away. And then I just get this constant, and so the limit doesn't change now. The limit is just 6 fifths. So this equals 6 fifths. So there is a, vertical, uh, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 6 fifths. So again, to summarize, for horizontal asymptotes, you basically do the following. You find the highest power on the top, the highest term on the bottom. bottom. If those exponents are equal, then you just rip off the coefficients, and that is your horizontal asymptote. Rip off the coefficients, and that's your horizontal asymptote. If the bottom term is growing faster, the exponent is larger than the top term, then the bottom dominates, and it's growing so fast it pulls the whole thing down, and you get an answer of 0. And if the top term dominates, the bottom term, then the top is going to infinity faster, so the whole limit doesn't exist. There is no horizontal asymptote. OK, well, those are the horizontal asymptote issues. Up next, we'll try to put all these ideas together, look at a few examples where you actually graph functions that are looking like this. What do you do first? You'll find the asymptotes and then revert back to the old stuff we did, finding max min, critical points, increasing, decreasing, points of inflection, concavity. <laughs> It goes on and on. We'll try a few together up next. See you there.